Bronson. Okay. <laughs> Forgot the name of the bike. <laughs> All right, so All right. when I called and you didn't answer, I was getting a little bit worried. What's the bike? <laughs> All right. Well, today's ride was supposed to be about 15 miles. Uh, it wound up being over 20. It got pretty hot out there. Uh, that's okay though, because it started off extremely humid. <laughs> Here it is, the 2022 Santa Cruz Bronson V4. Following the updates of the 27.5 inch wheeled Santa Cruz 5010 V4 and the Santa Cruz Nomad V4, the Bronson was the next logical model to get the bigger shock tunnel and VPP suspension refinements. The kicker this time? The Bronson is no longer a dual 27 5 inch wheeled mountain bike. All right. There you go. Look what showed up the other day. All right. New Bronsonius Maximus. Subtle color. That's going to fly under the radar, no problem. <laughs> no, no one will notice it. Um, thank goodness it comes out soon. This is the $9,849 build. It's the CC X01 Access. <coughs> All right. <laughs> It runs in MX mode, the Santa Cruz label for mixed wheel size, or what we often call mullet. 29 up front, 27.5 out back. Outside of the Santa Cruz e-bike line and their V10 downhill bike, this is the first trail or enduro bike to get the MX treatment. All right, one of the first things I noticed, I wanna see if you notice. The first thing I notice is this. This thing is huge. I tested the latest Nomad, and I don't recall the down tube being this big. This isn't gonna get repurposed and hide like a battery. Maybe it could hide a baguette or some delicious chocolate donuts, but not. You don't think it's for yeah. a battery for like a SL kind of future? Uh, after seeing it in person and like, like I'm testing the Orbea Rise SL right now, I've seen the SL from, from Specialized it, it's not the right shape. It's big, but you'd have to get real weird in order for that to work. But like, this is huge. The new Bronson's travel does not change. The rear end still has 150 millimeters of VPP travel and the fork provides 160 mils of squish, even with the 29 inch front wheel. There are high and low settings via flip chip and chainstay lengths and C tube angles vary with bike size. I don't know any numbers, but like off, off the cuff, I have to assume that this has a bigger reach. My medium had a 435 reach, so I'll be curious to see how this presumably longer reach and taller front end are going to affect that bike and, and behave on trail. Reaches are about 15 mils longer with a 20 mil higher stack height when compared to the previous Bronson. Five sizes are available, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And it should be noted that the extra small still runs dual 27.5 inch wheels, not a mixed setup. As usual with Santa Cruz, there's a lifetime warranty and free lifetime bearing replacement. For female riders, Juliana's Rubion follows suit with this new updated frame and builds as well. Across all sizes, in the low geometry setting, head angles are 64.5 degrees, and bottom bracket height is 341 millimeters. Our size medium has a seat tube of 76.6 degrees, a reach of 452 mils, and chainstay length of 436 millimeters. Flip the chip into high, and geometry changes ever so slightly. For now, the Bronson is only offered in C and CC carbon frames gold or green color, and there are seven complete Bronson builds as well as a frame set option. The Bronson CR is the cheapest at $5,049 US, with a SRAM NX Eagle build, Fox Float X Performance Shock, and RockShox Lyric Select Fork. If you want to more than double your budget, you can spend $11,399 for the Super Baller XX1 Access Reserve build. The Bronson frame set alone is $36.99, and that comes with a RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock. These bikes ride nice, but man, is that shock tunnel annoying. We were sent the $9,849 X01 Access Reserve build, which has that Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock, Fox 36 factory fork, and wireless SRAM X01 Access drivetrain. The shifter is GX Access, and the RockShox Reverb is the hydraulic cable version, not the Access Reverb. 30 mil wide reserve carbon wheels use Industry 911 hubs, 
We're used to seeing DT Swiss on reserve wheel sets, but it looks like that may have changed for 2022. Max's tires continue to adorn the bikes, and both tires on the Bronson are XO casing. The front 29 by 25 features a Max Grip rubber compound, though, which is pretty intriguing. Yeah, I'm super stoked on a Max Grip front tire, but the XO casing, you know, as a 165-pound dude, I like lighter tires, um, but I also like tires that grip. As we put the bike together and went over it, we noticed a new Santa Cruz handlebar that looks pretty fresh with markings that make lever position easy. Yeah, right, like they're throwing the Bergtech stem. This is a new bar. Actually, this is different from the, yeah, th this right here, like how it gets flat in here. Yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is a new bar. When we asked Santa Cruz about them, we were told the bars have a 35 mil rise with a 35 mil clamp diameter and 800 mil width. Santa Cruz said they made a handful of these at their in-house carbon lab and were so stoked on them they took them to production. Quote, these should be quite compliant, end quote, according to our contact over there. The Bronson showed up just the other day, so our tester Brad Howell took it out for a first ride report so we could have a little bit of ride feedback on this bike launch day. You hear that rattle? What is that rattle? Is it my pump? One last helmet squeegee. Oh my God. It is unbelievably humid. All right, well, today's ride was supposed to be about 15 miles. Uh, it wound up being over 20. It got pretty hot out there. That's okay though, because it started off extremely humid. Um, <laughs> and uh, a bunch of cows had like moved down the hills into the initial climb. Um, so what's usually bench cut was actually just kind of side sloped and really soft. Um, the smells were magnificent, but at least I was showering myself in my own perspiration. <laughs> Part of a good way that I like to test a bike, typically in a long-term test, but we're tight right now, is to go out on a ride that's longer and like not as fun as most rides. Short fun rides are short and fun. Almost any bike is great. But if you go out and you're tired, kind of dehydrated, and you're kind of relying on the bike, going to tell you more about what it's made of. How good of a friend is it in the bad times? That's what I want to know. As fun as my not an e-bike water bottle is, I probably could have used a second one out there today. Um, in fact, I know I could. My left quad started to cramp. It hasn't happened since 2004. One of the, the biggest questions that we were left with after testing the V4 Nomad was what's gonna happen to the Bronson? Because the V4 Nomad pedaled extremely well. Um, it scooted up the hill, it was amazing. Obviously, it's an absolute beast on the downhill. So you're like, okay, well, we have a little less travel, what's gonna happen to the Bronson? And we know what happened, we, it got a mixed wheel size. We have a 29 inch front, 27 rear, but the travel stayed the same. So it's still a 150 rear, 160 front, um, as opposed to the Nomad's longer travel. We also see a Fox 38 on the front of that bike, as opposed to the 36 that we're seeing on the Bronson. And kind of all of those points that we noticed about the Nomad, the improvements there, especially with its climbing and speed and general sprightly, neighbor on, uh, sprightly nature on trail, are amplified with the Bronson MX. And it, it does have, at least on an, an initial impression, it does have a dual nature of being both um, a bit of a bruiser, uh, but also um, the hooligan nature is there. <laughs> so rowdy ass bike. It's a lot of the things that I wished the prior Bronson would do have come to life here. Whoa! <laughs> Came unclipped. <laughs> my free ride flick was too much for my clips. And that's made possible with um, some changes that actually, they're, they're not like great technological changes. Um, 
it's just a little bit bigger reach. I liked how playful the prior Bronson was, but with that 435 reach, when I was coming through um, really heavy rock gardens or some sustained steep downhills, uh, the cockpit did start to feel a little more cramped. This has more room. So I thought that was really great. The chain stays have stayed similar in length. And so some of that, that ability to shove with your hips and drive through corners and really just kind of dig in with, with the back end through ruts, it's still present there despite the larger front wheel. Um, and I thought that was fantastic. I thought the Nomad pedaled well for an aggressive bike. This thing, you may as well take the climb switch off the rear shock and save a couple grams. Cause you're never gonna need it. Yeah, it is a better climber than the, than the prior Bronson. Uh, it's a better climber than the Nomad. I don't think there's any need for this thing. The climb switch? There's no use for, the, I don't know why you'd use the climb switch. Uh, it, it's cute that it's there, but it's, it's for information, it, like it's for decorative purposes, you know, a little splash of blue. <laughs> Much of the climbing that I had done today, I'd previously done on a 140 mil 29er. Uh, so a bike that was shorter travel uh, and arguably the best climbing bike I've ever ridden for myself. So moving from that to any bike is going to be a step down unless it's some sort of new transformative thing. So that said, um, is the Bronson as good of a climber as the best out there? No. I noticed the front end getting a little bit light when it was really steep and just, I really had to dig in. Uh, you'll notice that I have the seat very forward on the rails. You know, when it comes to just like gritting your teeth and just like going up something, like for the most part, I was able to do that with the Bronson, but I feel like I, I found those limits a little bit faster than I wanted to with it. I feel like in some regards, the seat tube angle could be a little bit steeper. But on the flip side, I don't know, like my knees felt great today. Um, so maybe there's some anatomical comfort there too. I don't know, I'm not a doctor, but I stayed at a Hampton Inn the other week. So obviously with the increased stack of the 29er already, this front end is gonna be a little bit taller. Uh, Santa Cruz has some new bars on this and they are taller than the traditional Santa Cruz bar, the prior iteration, which um, I really like. I like the feel and shape of this bar over the prior Santa Cruz bar. Um, but yeah, there's some stack underneath here. And so I think the next step is gonna be pulling one of these spacers and dropping this front end um, to see how that affects the climbing performance. There's enough room in there um, as far as like the, the weight shift that um, I don't think you're gonna be too far over the front, particularly for the descents um, with this bike. In the setup tips, uh, Santa Cruz was nice to kind of give us some, some pointers here. And one of the first recommendations was shock pressure, uh, where they used to kind of play with that range of like that maybe 27 to 33%. Uh, they said, run 30%, like do that. Um, which frankly on the prior Bronson, 27% um, made the bike feel a little too harsh. Uh, 33 made it feel dead. So, so I think there, there's enough variety in what you can swap out in the shock area, what you can do with this shock. This is a terrific shock that like, I don't think people should be upset if Santa Cruz is saying, hey, run 30%. The 36 Super Deluxe combo is not anything new. I kind of wish they would have kept them mated with the, the Lyric on here. Uh, I feel like the Rock Shocks pairing works extremely well or accentuates some of the, the great ride qualities of this bike. The damping performance out of the box with the Fox 36 is, it feels rather harsh. Um, Especially where like we've ridden the 38 a bunch this year and that fork is, has just such a nice buttery nature to it versus where the 36 can feel a bit harsh and it does feel like there's a bit of a mismatch going on here. Even with this changed leverage curve back here, um, the off the top sensitivity of the Super Deluxe versus not quite so sensitive with this 36. Um, Setup on it was kind of wild. Um, this is new terrain in so much as um, I pulled the top cap. There's no volume reducers in here. And I'm, I swing between 165, and 170 pounds. Um, depends on how much pizza I've had. I have it set up for like a rider that's like 160 pounds and still not really getting the feel out of it that I want. Um, so yeah, we're going to see where we go with this one. But I do feel like, I, I, I feel like a match set would have been nice. We're assuming at some point 
you've run the numbers and you're well aware that this bike is dangerously close to $10,000. Little disclaimer here, we didn't choose this build, we didn't choose this bike. This is the bike that was available and what was sent to us. When it comes to deciding what build works for you, you have to decide what fits your budget and what is most fun. If it's our dinero, I mean, let's be honest, we're, we're probably not gonna throw down this kind of money. But this is what's here and this is what's getting tested. Now, that said, we reached out to Santa Cruz and we said, hey, nice bike. <laughs> we wanna hang on to it for a while. And they said, well, how long? And we said, well, we wanna ride it for the rest of the year. And we're gonna publish our final review this winter on the grounds of two things. First off, what's a $10,000 bike look like after an entire season of flogging? We're gonna drag this thing everywhere. All right, we're gonna get a couple of people on it. We're gonna use it properly. And we're gonna see what that looks like at the end of a lot of miles and rocks. The other part is this is a mixed wheel bike. We're moving out of the niche category and into the mainstream. This is the first mixed wheeled mountain bike that Santa Cruz is offering. We knew that it was coming with their e-bike offering and the bullet, but now we're seeing it in a regular old mountain bike and it's becoming more prevalent with brands. We wanna unpack what is gimmick and what's worthwhile. Once the shine wears off, what's it feel like when you have a little rear wheel and a big front wheel? Is it the best of both worlds? Does it suck? I don't know, right now it feels really cool, but we're gonna report back to you in several months and let you know what we ultimately think of this little combo. Make sure you head to vitalmtb.com for the full report on this bike and the entire Bronson MX line. And if you wanna stay up to date with not only this project, but other great content, you have to like and subscribe. And until next time, go ride your bike. Officially in Sufferfest 2020. Hello, I'm Brad Howell with Vital MTV. And today, I wanna to talk to you about friendship. And I just wanna say, Bronson, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> <laughs>